Okay, I am uh, Christopher Wolf from the Danish podcast Beyond Bull, which translates to Behind the Cage. And I'm here with uh, Cage Watch matchmaker Ian Dean. Uh, first of all, welcome to Copenhagen. Yeah, thank you. It's your first show here uh, in, well, in Scandinavia and then obviously, of course, <laughs> in Denmark. So let's, let's talk a little bit about yeah, the card itself. Um, we talked a little bit earlier that you have quite some, quite a lot of local guys. I mean, there's five Danes and five other Scandinavian. Uh, is that usual when you go abroad that you have a lot of local guys that you want to promote local guys to the local fans or? Um, it depends. I mean, wherever you want to go, you want to um, use local fighters. You know, at the end of the day, outside of the UFC, MMA, um, you, you just can't bring in a bunch of outside guys and then sell it to a local area. You know, you need you need a strong local base. Uh, that that then gets their friends out, it gets their families out, and and also you know it'll get the sort of more casual people um, out who, who who may have heard of them as well. So yeah, I mean, when we're in the UK. Um, if you're in London, there'll be a lot of London or South East uh, England fighters on. Uh, we have a show in Wales next month. There's a lot of Welsh guys. It, it makes it's common sense from uh, you know a show point of view. And plus, people want to go and fight in front of their you know the local areas. Um, whereas with this show, you know Scandinavia's been blessed with some fantastic MMA talent, um, and I think the difference that we could do here that other shows may or may not be able to do is, you know. Not only are they going to get to fight in front of their you know, local local fans, um, but also that, you know we're going to get to showcase them around the world. You know we've got um, we're up, we're live online, we're live on TV here in Scandinavia. Yeah. Um, we we're on TV in, in the UK, uh, Ireland, um, Asia, everywhere. So you know it's it's a great it's a great chance for them to um, really sort of get themselves known and. Yes. So it's also kind of a kind of a, a strategy to, to go local, get local guys, to get fans in, and they'll hopefully uh, be be fan of the sport, not just the local guys, and they'll start to follow uh, Cage Wars whenever you go to yeah have a shows in the UK and they'll watch on TV and they'll like get in the Cage Wars family. Um, yeah, I mean to to some respect, yeah. I mean obviously like it makes sense if. If you've got local fighters and they've got fan bases, um, of course you're going to use them as long as they're good enough. Do you know what I mean? And, um, and, and as long as you can match them correctly, you know you still have the basics. But I think if you ask any promoter, you know um, you're going to make the best of what you can out of the local talent you have. And like I said, if you've got a lot of good local or regional talent, you, you know you're going to want to go and use it. I mean, you could go to an area. There's very few places in the world, I think, right now, where you could go and bring um, a complete bunch of outsiders to a card. Even if you look what the UFC are doing. Yeah, I know. In, in, in Asia, and, in, in, and even in the United States or Canada, you know, they're going to get guys that are going to appeal to that local market. Because if you don't, people, you know, people might not necessarily show. No, um, and it's no secret. We talked a bit earlier, and uh, uh, as I told you then. Uh, when I when I saw the the card for the first time, I was a little bit disappointed. Then I started to think, why am I disappointing? It's because I was just hoping for more UK guys because yeah. we don't see them as as much over here. So it's is is that um, a reason that a lot of the opponents aren't UK guys? I mean, the the are Scandinavian, but they're still also this Spanian and and some uh, Eastern Europeans and so. Um, is there anything, uh, any particular reason? <coughs> I know you have also shows coming up in the UK. Yeah. Are they already booked there, or? Yeah, I mean, like obviously we're doing eighteen shows this year. Yeah. Um, and we've already had two this year. One on one on February fifteenth. We had March the first as well. Um, uh, so yeah, there were some guys that were getting booked towards the end of last year uh, before this date was nailed down by hundred um, percent. And certain people are going to fight more in certain areas. Um, we've got a show six days after this one in the Middle East, 
and you know we've got guys you know booked up for there that suit that area as well. Um, some guys can't make it, you know. There, there's, there's lots of reasons. I mean, and like I said, when you've got Scandinavia that's blessed with some really fantastic talent as well, you know, you're a fool not to showcase that talent. But um, you know, on, on another day, there, there may well have been more UK guys. There, there's lots of things like MMA is, you know, the sport. MMA, you get guys that can get injured. People yeah, may not necessarily <laughs> be available. You know, there, there's no sort of um, like one real reason. No. So, we can just take a quick look at, at the card. I mean, there's a couple of fights that, that I'm looking forward to, and we're going to talk main event uh, later on, but I'm looking forward to uh, Martin Aka and Tony Tarona. I mean, Tony Tarona has already fought twice in Denmark. I mean, he's, he's well, he's a quiet guy, but he, he does spectacular fights. Um, and, of course, Damir Hatsvik against John Maguire uh, is also a fight yeah. that I'm really looking forward to, and then Mosin Bay against Bruno Cavallo. I mean, but is there, that's just my, <laughs> my favorite fights. Uh, so what, as a matchmaker, I mean, you were so the strategic genius of putting these fights together. So, uh, <laughs> so what, what are you looking forward to? I mean, it's, it's the labor of your work. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I like all three of those fights as well. I mean, um, I really like the, uh, the Mosin Bahari uh, Bruno Carvalho fight. It's a fight we tried to put on last year in London. Yeah. So, you know, I think that, again that shows you matchmaking wise if it's if we can put on a good fight, especially on the main card, you know, it, it may not necessarily happen in that area. If if it's you know, we've got T V partners as well that want, you know, quality fights. Um and I, I think this was gonna happen February last year and uh Mossum injured his leg. Um Bruno then fought Steve Dins down one. Um yeah, it's, it's, it's a great fight, you know, people around Scandinavia know uh, Bruno Carvalho, huge welterweight, um, great record, fantastic skill set, very tricky, uh, great jiu-jitsu, you know, judo background, and also, you know, he's also coming off a loss in Cage Warriors, so he's going to come into this one really, really hungry, I think, as well. Um, I, know, I know he's been training in Brazil beforehand, and, you know, Mosul Bahari, I think he's one of those guys, as soon as um, he was available to sign, we signed him on a multi-fight deal, Black Bruno. Uh, I think Mossen's got a lot of talent, so much potential. Um, you know, he, he had a mixed year last year, and lost to Matt Inman in Liverpool um, with a leg lock, you know. Um, but then rebounded really fantastically in Chechnya you know, of all places. When, uh, you know, when he won, uh, he won out there. And yeah, you know, he's, he's got really heavy hands, he's very exciting. Uh, yeah, like I said, I, I like the fight. I like I like to mix it up. But you know, nobody wants MMA where it's necessarily going to be like a stalemate. And I think sometimes if you mix up styles, it makes it makes it interesting, especially at this level. So, but but also, I mean, Mosin has fought in, in Denmark before. Uh, of course, uh, Damir, yeah. <laughs> being a Dane, has, has fought in Denmark before. Tony Tarun has fought in Denmark before. Having those three, uh, and we we agree that the the that's yeah. three great fights, but having them on the main card, Cage Warriors, mm. doesn't that put kind of a seal of an approval on the local shows, who has already features these fighters? Uh, or, or how do you see that? Or Look, yeah, credit credit to the other shows. You know, in a day, regional shows, you know, they've got to go out there and give talent a chance to shine. Do you know what I mean? But at the same time, we've signed Tony Tyro on a, a multi-fight deal. Um, you know, Damir is going to be looking to fight for us on the longer term. I know he's really looking to make a statement. Um, originally, he was going to fight Tommy McGuire, John's brother. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, last week Tommy was injured in training. Um, he can't fight. And yeah, I spoke to him earlier today. He's devastated. Um, but then, you know, John fought March the first. Went got a really narrow decision last. And you know, he phoned me up and said, "Look, I, I want to do it." get me happening, he, you know, he spoke to my boss, the k CEO, CA, Graham Boylan, they negotiated, um, you know, John's on a multi-fight of us as well, and, you know, 20, well, 12 hours later, we literally had that fight, and, um, you yeah, know, that fight now is even bigger, because, you know, you've got a guy really looking to prove himself on the national scene, I think we're giving Demir a chance to sort of, like, go beyond his local region, you know, with, again, with our TV deal, with our, with our media coverage, and, 
you know, it's a dream fight for him. Somebody like Maguire, who's been at the UFC, he's been at the, the top of the sport. Yeah, yeah. And it's a real tough fight for Maguire as well, because like Maguire's in a situation where he doesn't want to lose to, you know, what he will perceive to be a local guy, or a bit of a very talented one. Um, but these guys are on the card because they're good fighters. You know, uh, I'm a massive fan of Scandinavian MMA. Uh, if you look back on Cage Warriors, I was booking Scandinavian guys in 2004. You know, I had Tom Ninamaki fight in Sheffield in, in 2004. You know, in 2005, when we were doing shows at Skydome Arena in Coventry, uh, I booked David Bilkhead and Yanni Lax, Diego Gonzalez. You know, I've, I've always had, yeah, a, a lot of respect for Scandinavian fighters because they're, they're very technical. Uh, you know, they, they come to fight. And you know, I think they really appreciate the chances they get as well. And it, it's no surprise to me that they've done so well. They've got a great work ethic, work ethic, and it's no surprise to me that they do so well. So, you know, maybe it's because maybe it's maybe it's because I'm a fan of them, but they're on the card. Maybe it's because I appreciate that stuff. And I, I don't think there's too many other, you know, people in in at least in the UK uh, that would be wanting to be getting would want to be doing this. So, you know, yeah, look, credit credit to the guys for you know working working their way to getting records where they're getting you know chances like this and you know you know fair play to you know to the shows I mean there are some great you know good shows in Scandinavia Superior Challenge you know last few years you know you know we saw they they were doing big shows and like you know I know World Arena was here in Denmark and and European MMA as well but I honestly think that like we're really going to push these guys to hopefully to next level you know. They got the results in the cage. They, you know, the future's in their hands, and I do think we're going to bring something a little bit special on on Saturday night to uh, to the fans here in Denmark. Yeah. So let's move on to the main event. I mean, of course it's the main event, but it's also been talked about just featuring Danish undefeated uh, Nicholas Dalby yeah. against the uh, Ukrainian Sergei Chirilov. Yeah. Um, the first thing. I started to to uh, research on on Chirilo and once I got a little bit into it, I thought, has, has he and Ian lost it, yeah. or does he know something about Chirilo that I don't? Mm. So, so just which which one is it, <laughs> or is it something in between? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Depending who you speak to, like, I, I'm sure there's people out there that think I've lost it uh, way before this, but you know, you don't always get. Nothing's ever perfect no. in, in, in life in general, in, in, in MMA especially. MMA's a really cool sport, you know, it's, it's a tough sport. You know, respect to the guys who are in there, they train hard, they work hard. Um, and you've also got to make the most of opportunity. You know, and, and Sergei right now has a, an amazing opportunity. You know, be a good show, be a good show. You know what I mean? So that, that's my take on it. Yeah. But also, uh, now talking about promoting the fighters and keeping them within Europe, you just uh, released a documentary on Dalby, uh, mm -hmm. I think it was a 50 minutes uh, documentary. Um, so uh, you, you're putting, you're investing in them, uh, promotion. So uh, on the website, there was just a short uh, interview with the Chirillo. I mean, are you unintentionally believing that Dalby was, will win? Or, or is it just coincidence? Um, well, you know, there's a lot of political unrest at the minute in the Ukraine. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. The Ukraine's not <laughs> not the easiest place to get to. <laughs> Probably I not. Mean, um, I, mean, I, mean, I, I mean, that's a fair question, but then I, I don't think some people, again, like, unless you, you work in the industry, it, it's not necessarily easy to go and send somebody over to the Ukraine, you know, uh, and then get translators and then. And, and do that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, we're also promoting the show here in Denmark. Yeah. Um, you know, to the Danish people. Um, so that made a lot of sense. And obviously, you know, we couldn't send Sergey here any earlier than we have because obviously he needs to get a visa to go into the European Union, as you know. So you know, I mean, um, before we we have done videos on people. Um, Two different, two different sides, but you know, this occasion, it's that's how it, you know, that's how it planned out, you know. And like I said, whoever wins, you know, we've got plans, you know. And, and if, Serge, if Sergey wins, you know, it's gonna, you know, put his name up in lights. People are gonna start taking interest. And you know, like I said, there's not, 
there's no shortage of contenders out there right now. No. But I mean, I can, I can understand why people are saying that, but like I said, it's they, pe people are sometimes easy to uh, quick to criticise, but you know, don't really delve into why things happen the way they do, you know? No, but I mean, that's, that's why we want to talk to you. Would you me personally, I just want to hear the explanation. Yeah. I'm, I'm not here to, to criticise, no, I'm no, here no. to ask the question. So, um, but otherwise, I mean, it was really interesting talking to you to get a little uh, behind the scenes and get into the engine room of, of Kids Wars. So I'm looking forward to the show on Saturday, especially the three fight that yeah. we talked about, but also to see who the new World of Witch will be. So really nice talking to you, Ian. Thank you very much. And I hope to, to get a chance to talk to you again uh, maybe after the show yeah, or next time you're in company. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. Cheers.